Linked genes are not independently inherited. For an example, let's imagine a Mendelian dihybrid cross using fruit flies. The male on the left has a recessive black body trait and recessive purple eye trait. The female on the right has the dominant caramel body color trait and dominant red eye color trait. Since this is a Mendelian cross, we can assume they are homozygous for both traits. In this instance, the letter E represents eye color and the letter B represents body color. Linked genes are by definition on the same chromosome, so it's helpful to imagine the genes as they occur in nature, that is, on a chromosome. A fruit fly karyotype would have four pairs of chromosomes. The black body and purple eye genes are on chromosome 2, so we will only consider that pair. Notice that the eye color and body color genes are represented as an integral part of our diagrammatic chromosomes. The original mating pair, or P1 generation, are homozygous for both traits. So after meiosis, each will donate one copy of the chromosome pair to any progeny. The progeny, or F1 generation, will be heterozygous for both traits and will all have the dominant set of phenotypes. Now let's set up the F1 cross. If linkage is being tested, then the F1 cross will not follow the standard Mendelian scheme. Instead, the F1 progeny will be mated to a homozygous recessive, similar to a test cross. In this scenario, the homozygous F1 parent can only donate recessive traits to its offspring. That way, any differences we see in the F2 generation will be the result of meiotic events from the heterozygous parent. If that parent passes along the chromosome with both recessive traits, then the F2 individual produced from that fusion will be genotypically homozygous recessive, phenotypically recessive for both traits, and will resemble one of the original parents. We would call that phenotype parental recessive. If that parent passes along the chromosome with both dominant traits, then the F2 individual produced from that fusion will be genotypically heterozygous, phenotypically dominant for both traits, and will resemble one of the original parents. We would call that phenotype parental dominant. Recall that during meiosis, crossing over can occur between homologous pairs of chromosomes. If a crossover event occurs between the two genes responsible for the traits we are following, then the combination of traits will change. Now it is possible that an F2 progeny could be dominant for eye color, yet recessive for body color. This combination is called non-parental because it did not occur in either of the original parents in the P1 generation. Conversely, the F2 progeny could be recessive for eye color and dominant for body color. This combination is also non-parental. When genes are linked, the proportion of each phenotype is determined by the distance between the two genes. For example, if the black body and purple eye traits are very close to one another, we would expect very few non-parentals compared to parentals. That's because the likelihood of a crossover occurring within that small area on the chromosome is also small. The likelihood of a crossover between the genes increases with distance. So the farther any two linked genes are from one another, the greater the number of non-parentals compared to parentals. Since there is a direct correlation between gene proximity and non-parentals, we can use the proportion of non-parentals to parentals to calculate an approximate distance between two linked genes. 
Let's say we count the number of parentals versus non-parentals in our example cross. We might count 94 parentals and 6 non-parentals. Therefore, 6% of the total number of F2 flies are non-parentals. Geneticists call this percentage a genetic map distance and would describe the two genes as being six map units or centimorgans apart.